MixedNetRadio.com with Andrew and Lee. Talking boxing, combat, sports, comedy, football, and everything kick-ass. All on FightNetRadio.com. Fight Net! Las Vegas discount dot net's the best there is. Save up to 50% on your next Vegas trip. And travel, rental, shows, and tours. Find the deals you're looking for. Las Vegas discount dot net. Las Vegas discount dot net. If you're going to Vegas for deals that are the best, visit Las Vegas discount dot net. Hola, soy Julio César Chávez. And lights out, baby. Lights out all day. This is Sugar Ray Leonard, and you listen to Fight Net Radio. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's a radio show. It ain't a one-hour television spectacular. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. We gonna know. I got eyes and ears everywhere. I got friends all over the world, man. Who oh, gives a shit with Whitey? He's a piece of crap. Oh, hi, this is Manny Pacquiao. I'll fight anybody on FightNetRadio.com. You are listening to Ken Norton on FightNet Radio. And I've been thinking that I would come out of retirement just to knock out Lee Honey. Hi, everyone. FightNet Radio. Lee Honor, Chandru Labache, bringing you your midweek update in the wonderful world of boxing and other things. Uh, there's always other things. I was going to do other things today, but I'm pressed for time, Andrew. And there's so much going on in the wonderful world of boxing. There uh, is. I, not really. Oh. Not really. I just thought I'd say that, actually. Um, <laughs> I thought you had breaking news for me or something. What the hell are you looking at? There's no breaking news. <laughs> Have you noticed that I haven't turned on my screen? Wait, I'll turn on my screen. My breaking news is Google. Um Uh-oh. I think the only thing that I've found interesting as of late in the world of boxing, okay, is uh, Deontay Wilder still being somewhat crazy, Espinosa doing some kind of weird damage control. Like, there's a high level of Steven Espinosa damage control. So let's catch everybody up in case they live under a tree or they don't listen to this show. Steven Espinosa, uh, hi, by the way, everybody, that's Andrew. My name's Lee. If, you, if you've never listened to this show, this is not the place to jump in. Not the place. Go pick uh, the episode before this. This is a midweek update show where we mostly do inside jokes. And since I only have about an hour to do this call, um, <laughs> let's be perfectly honest. I'm going to I'm going to Cirque du Soleil tonight, Andrew. Have you been to a Cirque du Soleil show? No, I don't think so. No, sir. Do you know what Cirque du Soleil is? Yeah, it's the funny people jumping around, he said. Yeah, good job. Uh, <laughs> good job. I feel like putting it on the screen just for my own personal amusement, just so you can see what I'm going to. Uh, do you think the photos are even going to work for you, Andrew? <laughs> yeah, and there you go. This is what I'm going to tonight. I'm going to this. And Are you ready for this, the backstory on this? So it's the story of a clown that dies, and the different acts are the things he sees as he's dead. Oh. This is a dream about past love interests. That would be the clown who's dead. Uh, More about his birth. You know, it's a life flashing before his eyes. Kind of weird, eclectic, artsy-fartsy. You know, shit I like. And there are people listening to this show going, really? Lee, that's really? Yes, really. I like art. Uh, Truthfully, I do. What's so weird about that? I mean, Andrew likes the Raiders. Why can't I like art? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Go to fightnetradio.com. That's our web page. That's where you can jump off and listen to all the episodes. Join the 7.2 million faithful who have downloaded, listened, or watched us do crazy antics and talk about crazy shit in the wonderful world of boxing. I think we have cataloged and live for you to listen to 259 hours 
that'll keep you busy. If not, click on this one down here that says uh, the NBC Sports link. That'll give you another 100 hours of uh, past audio links as well. Uh, today, we are going to jump over to our Facebook account, and uh, we're going to cover some tidbits in the news, uh, usually from boxing scene. That's how we roll. Um, there is something that I added onto our FightNet Radio page. And by the way, join us on social media at fight.net.radio on social on Facebook, which is where most of you, because of your age, are. You know, this is the last episode before my birthday, Andrew. I don't know if I'm actually going to... We did it. We did a show on my birthday last year, didn't when we? When is your birthday? Sunday. What, what is that? Uh, the 31st? Yeah. Guess what my birthday is. Yours is the 30th, Andrew. No. Is it the 31st? <laughs> I'm on April 4th. Okay, yeah, but I knew it was right around mine. I, I always think it's like right before or right after. Yeah, the uh, reason we get along is because we're both Aries and assholes. Um, very cool. There's something very assholey about the fact that we're kind of the same person. Um, deep down, Andrew's an asshole. He plays, he's playing the role of Andrew right now. And he's on guard because literally all of his family listens to the show, which is hilarious to me. If I found out my daughter was secretly listening to the show, it would be totally different. Um, on our FightNet radio page, there is a tidbit that I added that I think is super cool that I found uh, on accident. And it's this little gem right here. Since they haven't taken it down, Andrew, I'm going to recommend it to everybody. Uh, Bear Grylls did a show called Running Wild for a couple of years. This particular episode of Running Wild is right after uh, Anthony Joshua had beaten Klitschko. And it was really interesting to learn, like, um, because they basically beat the shit out of the celebrity, they're fairly honest in the interview. And I think it's a good inside look if you don't know who Anthony Joshua is. And um, I think it gave me a lot more perspective on Anthony Joshua, believe it or not. Um, he's actually a fairly decent, normal guy. Did you he watch the how did he do? Oh, he did great. He made it the, the 24 or 48 hours. They do 48 hours. They go somewhere. Uh, they spend the night there. Uh, his greatest fear were heights. So Bear basically kept making him jump off the side of mountains on a rope. And not telling him that there were safeties in place, which he actually had. In fact, he makes a great joke right after this descent. He goes, he tells, uh, don't let go of the rope because you'll just slide down to the ground and you will crash and you will die. And bears the first one down and he goes, look, I realize that's the heavyweight champion of the world. And you see this rope right here? It's tied to him. If he suddenly loses his hand grip, there is no way I'm letting him crash back to earth. He goes, but Anthony doesn't know that. Right. And somehow I feel that Anthony knows that, but neither here nor there. He comes off very, I think it's great. It's only like 45 minutes. I found it on YouTube. So I put it up on our page for everybody to watch. And I've been passing it around. As you can see from the number of people that have already jumped on it in the past 24 to 48 hours, it's been very popular in the forums as well. I recommend going to fightnetradio.com, clicking on that Facebook link and enjoying yourself a little Anthony Joshua. There you go. That's our plug for what I want you guys to go do this week. Now, the reason I'm on our Facebook page when Andrew and I don't know what to talk about, we just type in the word boxing scene. Now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do a behind the scenes today, Andrew, because we have basically another 45 minutes to kill and there really is no news. I'm gonna show you the real secret of how I find topics to talk about for this show. I don't know how, you you pick out stuff you wanna talk about, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, I could care less. Most of this is shit stuff. See these little buttons down at the bottom, like these insights or the clicks or the comments or the number of likes? Generally, I scroll through things and I find the ones that have the highest clicks. Like this one, 171. Why this would be a good story in my universe, Andrew. Loeffler on Klitschko, if he returns, he should fight Deontay Wilder, shocker. So. This story is interesting, and I did know about this story. Uh, various reports over the past few weeks about Vladimir Klitschko coming back and being pursued by Dazen, and even Deontay Wilder is going so far as to say, uh, yeah, I'm going to fight Klitschko before the end of the year, which I thought was really cool on his part since he just 
basically pulled that out of his ass, right? Did you know at the time Deontay said it that he was pulling it out of his ass? Well, yeah, because we haven't even heard of Klitschko uh, talking about a return yet. Right. There was rumors that he shut down, um, but there was nothing on record saying he was making a comeback. Well, let's see what his manager said, shall we? Uh, Loeffler said, and I quote, he had such a good campaign uh, championship run that a lot of people want to see him back in the ring, said Loeffler to Sirius Radio. Uh, a company is offering him a lot of money to come back. He's one of those brands that fans want to see him come back, and I'd like to see him come back. Of course you do, you fucking vulture. Um, I don't know whether he's content with what he's accomplished in his career already. You know, his brother Vitaly was the Hall of Fame last year and is now the mayor of Kiev. And Vladimir has had one of the most story championship runs. Okay, great. It will be his decision. It makes sense. And he has been posting videos and photos showing the bug is still somewhere in the back of his head. He came so close when he knocked down Anthony Joshua. My personal opinion is I'd like to see him and Deontay Wilder. Vladimir had such a great championship run uh, with Coach Emmanuel Stewart. Uh, brought in the best sparring partners. He brought both Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder in as sparring partners. Didn't know that fact. Did you know that fact? No, sir. See, we learned something. So here's what we learned from this article, everybody. He's not coming back. I mean, let's be perfectly honest. Even his manager, who probably could have thrown gasoline on it, and this article's but a few hours old, right? 4.15 Eastern time, so it was 1 o'clock today. So article's three hours old, Andrew. They could have thrown plenty of gla- gasoline on the fire right here. So what do you make of the Deontay, Tom Loeffler cabal to try to get Klitschko back in the ring? Well, they got to offer some money to get him back in the ring. I think just people saying they want him to fight isn't going to do it. Uh, let's see what they're offering him. Where's the fight going to be at? You know what I mean? Are they going to make him come to America? Or are they going over there to fight him? I think that matters to Klitschko. Santa Monica, bro. Klitschko lives in Santa Monica. He doesn't fight in America, Lee. We all I, know he, this. I understand that. Okay, so are they going to make about, him? like faraway places, but the guy lives like next to Triple Well, G, that's Monica. fine, but he doesn't fight here. So what, what I'm saying is, that are they going to make him fight in America, which I don't think he'll do, or are they going to go over there to fight him? Um, that, that, that all matters to Klitschko. So this is a dead story until, uh, it won. We even hear Klitschko wants to return himself. Like you said, who cares what his manager says? Um, that's pointless. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what else you want me to say about this. Nope. I thought it was a story last week. I thought it was bullshit th- when he pulled it out of his ass. I think but- it's a career killer for Deontay too. Imagine even if he wins, but what if he only won by decision? You know, it's uh, and then what if the right oh, no, hand lands? Look, nobody wants. Look, if Klitschko really came back, from my opinion, my my legit opinion, do you want me to be Lee or do you want me to be the character that I play on this show? Uh, is what do you what do Which you? Which answer have? do you really want? Uh, Lee. Okay, Lee. Uh, I don't think anybody really wants him, dude. And here's why: he's gonna take you the distance. Like he's he's a legit badass. Like he's tough enough to work out how to stay in the, like you've really got to come up with an Anthony Joshua type lucky punch. And I don't know if Deontay really has that kind of lucky special power. Now he's demonstrated it, right? He's demonstrated it with Tyson uh, Fury, but truthfully, look at what Klitschko does. He takes people the distance. He takes them into deep water. He works behind a jab, which I've said repeatedly on this show. I am all about guys who work behind the jab, especially the fact that he's, you know, basically a Manny Stewart robot, right? He works off. You and I have both seen this firsthand. He's a guy who is prepared to win a fight without ever throwing his right hand. He is prepared to do nothing but throw a jab, be a boring boxer, hashtag workmanlike, right? And take a victory. Who's Who wants to fight that? That's, you know, I don't want to break it to everybody in boxing that glamorizes Klitschko. What you want is Lennox Lewis, you want a guy who's going to go in and throw bombs from all kinds of angles. That's not what Klitschko is. He's a very smart man who fights a very smart fight, who made a tactical error because of his age against Anthony Joshua. And if he doesn't make that mistake, he beats Joshua. There's no question. He beats Joshua. That fight's over, right? If he 
if yeah, he's, he's dead tired. Okay. He and he dead that's tired. because he's an old man, and I'm sure that's got to be in the back no, of his Joshua mind. Joshua was. No, Joshua was dead tired in that fight. Yeah, Joshua but I think I think that. Klitschko was too. I don't. Well, at the very end, but but Klitschko had his moment. Lee is all I was saying. I was agreeing with you. He did have his moment. Right. Um. I don't think you want that. I truthfully, I don't think Tyson Fury wants that. I don't. If we look at the three heavyweights right now, Joshua will claim he's already done it. Tyson Fury wants no part of that, right? Um, because we know what that's going to look like. It's going to be a close fight that's going to go 12 round with two guys wrestling. That's not exciting to anybody. It's a great payday. And that leaves one guy, Deontay Wilder, who we've now... Deontay Wilder's fans... Kelly King, everybody back away from your keyboard and stop writing your responses right now um, to this next response. Deontay Wilder is not a good fighter. I, he demonstrated that against Tyson Fury, right? He's capable of throwing big time punches and hitting people. He doesn't really want Tyson Fury. He doesn't really want Anthony Joshua. I think he wants Joshua before he wants Fury. I think that's a winnable fight for him, but Guys that are going to take you 12 rounds deep and tie you up and just grind on you? Who wants that shit? Who wants it? Who wants it? Like, if you're looking at fights, you want somebody who's going to throw bombs. You know, I, if I were one of the heavyweights right now, I couldn't sign on the dotted line quick enough to get a Deontay Wilder fight. Because truthfully, he's hittable. He's slow. He's awkward. He's stupid in the ring. He does stupid ass shit in the ring. I mean, seriously, somebody's going to knock his ass out. That's do you think Do you think they're pulling a Bob Arum here, Lee, and using Klitschko's name to get Deontay's name yeah, around the world? I do. I do. Right? He's and I think, it, fight and I think it looks good. And I think it looks good for Deontay Wilder. Right? I think it looks really good for Deontay to go, oh, we got the, you know, we're talking to Tom and DeZone. You know, they're all talking big things. But if you really look at this article... The only offer that's out there is DAZN, right? Because they're the only ones with that kind of cash. So Deontay can back away from his keyboards and his microphones and and be legit and go. Well, it matters. It matters what fight. Uh, yeah, you know what? No, because America, there's not an audience. There's not big No, it's got to be DAZN. It's, it's got to be yeah. DAZN. Yeah, yes. They're the only ones that can drop $100 million on the table for two or three fights to get Klitschko. Right. And the three and fights are pretty obvious. Out. And it actually pay out. I don't know if ESPN, if that would um, help. The ESPN app, it could help, but I, I don't know how many subscribers they have to what Klitsch, Klitschko would be demanding. Okay. Well, let's um, take, let's go that route. Would you pay, if you are ESPN, I, I guess I'll just say Bob Iger because that's the CEO of Disney, but I'm sure there's a sports director for ESPN. Sorry, don't know his name. Um, he's clearly not a douchebag like uh, Steven Espinosa and wanting to be a celebrity. But let's just say Bob Iger goes, we want everybody on that channel, right? And he just green lights all the money that Disney has behind it, which is a considerable sum of money. They can they can play the DAZN game, right? They just bought Fox, for God's sakes. Um, by the way, did everybody catch those words that came out of my mouth? Fox, Fox Sports... Fox channels, all things Fox, are now owned by Disney. Do you want me to say that one again? Because as of Monday, it will be all things Fox owned by all things Disney. Not right. just Fox movie. All things Fox. I got to make sure about that, but I'm pretty Se sure that's... 71 billion. I believe it was a 71 billion sale. I think they get, they get what? They get Fox News, Fox Sports. They get all things Fox, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll have to confirm that. But I know the sports. Real, I know the sports side. I believe they got all the spot, uh, Fox Sports channels. Here's another yes. secret to everybody. You think with all they've got invested in that app, Andrew, that they're going to tolerate that PBC on Fox shit in the future? That, <laughs> it's going to come down to DAZN <laughs> and ESPN. Oh, you're talking about some – they're going to have to cut some guys, Lee? Oh, they're going to get to the end there. of that contract and PBC is going to come back to the table, the – Infamous Al Ellerby and Floyd Mayweather. Uh, well, we're going to bring Floyd back. We're going to put him on. Uh, we're going to put him on Fox, and we're going to do uh, pay per view. We're going to do the whole thing, and Fo and ESPN Plus slash Disney is going to go. Well, that's good for you. Maybe Showtime's interested because we're not. 
And that'll be the end of that shit. I do think that Fox and Showtime are on the way out the fucking door. And they got to get their shit collectively together and figure out who they're going to play ball with. Because all things boxing are going to come down to two stations, Andrew. Let's just all get it in our heads at this moment. It will be all ESPN or all DAZN. And I'm good with it because you we, we talked about this on Sunday. I want to be able to sit down at 3 o'clock and watch my boxing and watch the whole fucking card. And by the way, why would you ever leave your home? There are no seats you can get at a fight that are as good as your 60 or 70 inch high definition TV. I just what, know this what, as a what fact. We need, what we need to see work though, Lee, is is the Dazen and Bob Aaron put a huge fight on one of their streaming apps and get it over with. Because right now, the zone looks. At, I don't even know what I'm supposed to fucking call this thing. Are we going to zone? Is it the zone or Dazen? What are we running with? The zone is the correct terminology. All right, the zone. They um, said they're not doing pay per view right now. Why Bob Arum is siding with Al Heyman is because Al Heyman is in a position where he has to do pay per view. I don't know if you guys are hearing, but uh, Porter put out a tweet this week that uh, him and and Spence are gonna their next fight will be on pay per view. So that's why Al Heyman siding with with uh, I mean Bob's siding with Al Heyman. Um, saying he's doing great moves. Uh, uh, it, it's funny, Lee. Bob wanted to sign Deontay, right? Come to us, three fights, yep, yep. $80 million. As soon as he turns down zone, all of a sudden, uh, Al Heyman's a good man. There's a lot more money in that fight if he didn't sign. Well, what the fuck? Why were you trying to sign him then? <laughs> Gotta love that by Aaron, but whatever. Uh, yeah, that that's... um. This is where it's going to – This the sticking point to this whole thing right now is how is ESPN going to work out the streaming side of a major fight when Tyson Fury Joshua happens? Where is it happening? Because they said they're not doing pay-per-view. Joshua is for their streaming app. They signed him to a, you know his big deal, $50 million a fight or whatever he's making. How do they clear that up with ESPN? Do they run a, a – does ESPN get to run the app in America only? You know what I mean? Like this is well, where it's- okay. here's the, the that's why I pulled up the article. So because Disney already owns television stations, they're going to force them to sell off all of the regional Fox television stations. So they've got to sell Fox Sports. They've got to divest all of that stuff, which is part of the deal. I knew that it would be in there. Technically, the DOJ doesn't want them to be. Um, so when you buy another company. For those of you that don't understand the wonderful world of I want to buy everything, Disney can't have more than one television station on network TV. They can't have multiples. They don't have a sports one, so they'll probably keep Fox Sports. But truthfully, well, they become well. Here's the thing. Yeah, right. So they can't they can't be a monopoly, right? That's the that's why the Department of Justice oversees big mergers like this. So they obviously see them buying multiple television stations as a possibility of being a monopoly. And so they're going to make them sell off all those companies. That's going to have a huge impact. That's going to have a huge Fox impact. Is, you think Fox is going to start paying out money for boxing when they get sold off to third parties or to other, like, yeah, that's any, crazy. Yeah, that's, yep, yep, yep. Boxing is going to be the lowest on the list. I don't want to break it to everybody. Fox Sports might go away altogether. Yeah, they might, uh, you know, but they all get regional action, right? So you Fox de- West gets like the Anaheim Angels. They get the Clippers, you know, it's a thing. I don't, do you have uh, what Fox Bay area? What do they have up there? Mm, I have no idea. No, I don't. Fox, we just have Fox sports. I don't know. I don't you know. know what you must have a has. Fox Bay. I'm sure you no, must. Cause we, no, the A's, they're not on Fox. Maybe the Giants. It might be the Giants. Do you even care about the Giants, Andrew? No. No. I don't care you, if they win or lose. Do you hate all things time. San Francisco? No, it doesn't. I, I'm not from San Francisco, so why do I have to fucking <laughs> like their <laughs> Well, sports? Well, technically, Golden State and the A's are like Oakland. I mean, that's still... 
No, but my family's from Oakland. My grandpa right. was stationed in Oakland. My mom and my auntie were born there. Uh, my grandfather's family's from there. So, no, they're Oakland rooted. All right. Did you like the angels when they were the California angels? No. Okay. No. Just, just thought I'd toss that one out there, too. <laughs> so, there you We've go. always had on. winning teams, though, too. You got to remember, Oakland wasn't the A's and the Raiders. They were they weren't were uh, bad teams back in the day, so there was no reason to root for other people. We were the badasses, right? Yeah, the, but... the Raiders are the badasses for decades, and the A's fucking are destroying it in baseball. Remember that? Hey, you know we had a base series already, right? You remember yep. that? Yeah, you did. And an earthquake right in the middle of it. Sweep. Sweep. No, come on. That, could you imagine if the Raiders-Niners played in the Super Bowl? Could you imagine that? That already happened uh, in baseball. You know what? Like, no no uh, contest. I'll tell you my literal dream because next year is the only window where it might happen. The Chargers versus Rams. Nah, get Especially off the Chargers. with the Super Bowl coming up to L.A. next year or the year get, after. Get off the Chargers. The Raiders are winning the West from here on out. Until that Las uh, Vegas is built, the Raiders are winning the West. Okay. Yeah, overnight. Just, just yeah, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> it just means you're going to the games for the next couple I of years. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, so I have a little note to all the boxing writers as well as the boxing promoters who might listen to this show. You guys should pay attention to what the fans actually click on, like I do when I'm picking a story. Tevin Farmer, who's been jammed down our throats repeatedly as though he were news. Look at – nobody pays attention to te fucking Tevin Farmer. I don't know why they think that he's a news story. Progress is a bigger story than Tevin Farmer. <laughs> why doesn't anybody look at this shit besides me? I feel like I'm the only one. Here's another Rosario Coda. Who, it's not a news story. Nobody cares. But this is a fight being made. These guys are being paid money. They were lucky enough to get three people to click and like it. Wow. Let's click and find out more about that shit. David Price has more interest than this fight. <laughs> Why am I the only one who pays attention? It's because I'm a marketing guy, right? So yeah. I always look at the numbers. But I wish that boxing guys would pay more attention to this shit. Because here's that. the truth. Cannon Boom. Briggs is the biggest fucking news in boxing, and nobody will sign him because he's a loose cannon. I mean, he's a yeah, legit... He's a health risk. <laughs> you talk about what the hell, man? Who cares, Andrew? 47 Look. years old. Look at that white okay. hair. Tell him to die. All right, Andrew, in the crazy world of I win the lotto tonight, right? The $750 million. And I decide that you and I are going to go into the business of being promoters, not only of me and my 20 and 0 record, but also we're going to go into the business of being boxing promoters in California, which by the way, getting a promotional license in California, I have looked into it, is miserably hard to get one. So we're going to need all your connections to get our boxing li uh, promoter's license. Very nice. You know anybody? We'll call Oscar. No, here's the thing. You've actually got to work for someone or have somebody sign off on you to get a promoter's license. It's we'll a big call deal. Oscar. Oscar will get it for you, dude. You just got to give him some money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You guys do know he took a briefcase full of cash to a casino parking lot to sign Manny Pacquiao. He'll fuck out of here. He'll do it. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> what, dude? <laughs> bro. Keep it on the DL, bro. Why's that shit gotta be that way? I don't want to have to come up there and kick your ass, eh? Hey, hey Andrew. 500K in a parking lot. What the hey, hell? Hey, Andrew? What? Do you know what Murphy's Law is? Nope. You don't know what Murphy's Law is? Nope. Then this joke's not going to fucking work, mate. <laughs> I feel like I should finish the joke just for people who are it, screaming. Stupid. There's like literally people screaming going, finish the joke, bro. Yeah, no shit. I thought you were. You need to know what Murphy's Law is. They need to make the joke work, okay? So, yeah, just say, yeah, I know what Murphy's Law is. It's mean, like, bad shit happens when bad shit's happening. Say that. Okay. Hey, do you know what Murphy's Law is? <laughs> yes, I do. Go ahead. Do you know what Cole's Law is? 
No. <laughs> a side order at KFC, asshole. Oh my god, you're so stupid, Lee. You're so st- there are people laughing somewhere. Yeah, I promised yeah. I was gonna do that joke when I heard it. Seriously. So my, my my lady called me and she goes, Do you know what Murphy's Law is? And I'm like, Yeah, bad shit happens when, you know, bad shit's happening. And she goes, Do you know what Cole's Law is? I said, No, I don't know what Cole's Law is. She goes, <laughs> It's a tasty side order at KFC. And I went, fuck, I walked right into that. Shannon Briggs will go for the British boxing license. Good for him. Former heavyweight champion and internet sensation, Shannon Briggs, who's 47 year old, is going to go full Rocky and apply for his British boxing license and wants to fight in the UK. No shit. Because he puts butts in seats. Shannon Briggs, Andrew, is the modern day... Uh, Billy Gun, Billy, uh, Billy the the Machine Gun. What's his real name? Uh, <laughs> right. What What's the dude who died from AIDS? Uh, yeah, yeah. Tommy heavy, Gun. Tommy Gun. Tommy Gun. Tommy. Tommy Morrison. Tommy Morrison. There you go. Jeez is he almighty. not? Is he not Tommy Morrison? A Jace. You know, he's 47. He's Wasn't he just in the hospital? I could have swore this guy just got out of the hospital somewhere. Um, he had his moment uh, about two years ago when he almost, who was it? He almost got Klitschko, right? He had a million views on his YouTube of him chasing Klitschko around. He almost got the fight, but he didn't. Uh, tell me why he went to the hospital. Could have swore. I pity the fool. That's why. What happened to Shannon Briggs? Hold on. I'm going to tell you. Oh. I'm turning you on the phone, fool. <laughs> why does he sound like Mr. T? Like, does anybody realize that Mr. T oh, is extremely yeah, yeah. racist, too, and you can't do a Mr. T impression? Even though, as kids, we all walked around and did, I pity the fool. Anyways, this I is can't good. do any black person on this show yet. Why I get not? constant emails from the <laughs> FNR regulars of people they'd like me to impersonate. I don't want to break it to you guys. I am never going to do someone who's African American. Just there's no fucking way. I mean, it's bad enough that I do Oscar, but I feel that since I grew up in Montebello and Oscar was literally a stone's throw away and went to the same parties I did. I feel that I can do sort of the atypical Oscar de la Hoya East LA thing. Beyond that, I'm sorry. Uh, you should just be happy with the fact that um, with the selection of people that I impersonate. Uh, this is what he had to say. We've been trying to look for the right fight, Briggs told Sky Sports. I'm actually going to go in front of the British Boxing Board and hopefully get my license to fight. I've been licensed to fight in the U.S., but I would love to fight in England. Hopefully you'll see me in the ring in June or July, but I'll be there this year, hopefully. I get a response from the people. Yeah, because you're a fucking nut, bro. Like, he's literally... Who's the backyard guy that died? Didn't he die from AIDS too? Um, Kimbo Slice. He's boxing's Kimbo Slice. I think he did it the right way, Andrew. (laughs) Uh, if he gets a fight, I don't know. If he gets paid and he gets a fight, he did it right. Let's see who else is popular. He tried. Nobody cares about Miguel Roman. Uh, Sergey got thirty-two clicks. Did you see the numbers for the? Look, so we them. didn't get. So we haven't gotten the numbers for Errol Spencer. Yeah, we did. Team. Well, there was a leak. I posted them earlier today. Uh, did we actually 000? get real numbers? It was like 300 or 400,000, something really Okay, sucked. let me tell you why that's hilarious. So they posted the Fox numbers from Sunday. They only did 250,000 people on Sunday for Fox Sports 1. Let, can we just all face it? The PBC's over. Like, nobody's buying into this shit at all. Yeah. And not- our friend Steven Espinosa is back in the news. By the way, look at the number of clicks that Espy gets. And you remember what I told you earlier, what I seen earlier about uh, someone bringing up how Adrian Broner, everyone needs a Wilder needs to remember how Adrian Broner turned down the Rock Nation deal. Forty million dollars, Lee. Five fights, 40 million. He also turned down a three fight, six 
and a half million dollar deal from Dazzin just recently. He'll still make more on Showtime, Andrew. Yeah, from what it shows here, as far as guaranteed money, now in the Pacquiao fight, he could have made more, but on guaranteed, Vargas, Pacquiao, Garcia, Granados, and Therapane, he only brought in two, three, four, five, six million dollars. That's more than 40 million. 40 million for my Stephen Espinosa calculator. Thank you for giving me those numbers. Hold on, let me check that again. I'm going to double check my work. Okay. 2 million for Pacquiao. For Pacquiao. Okay. 1 million for Vargas. Okay. It says One. three so far, Andrew. 1 million for Garcia. Hold on, oh. plus one. That's $4 million, Andrew. Yeah, 1 million for zeros. Granados. Yep, yep. We're at five, right? <laughs> Then 1.3. You know what? I forgot the 1.3. Let's give them the extra. Six million three hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And he was offered how much? He was offered a five fight forty million dollar deal. Okay, hold on, hold on. Five fights (laughs) divided by forty million. Carry the six point three million. Nope, the six point three was still a better deal per the Espinosa calculator, Andrew. I double checked my work. Very nice. I'm telling you, what is the most popular thing on the show? You people wonder what we actually get notes about from the FNR regulars. <laughs> they love the Espinosa calculator. They think it is the funniest thing ever, ever. And uh, even, if well, you go, even if you go back to one year. Oh, hold I on. Know, I don't even know if, if uh, Broner, we'd have to look up his record. Has he even fought in three times in one year? He would have made six and a half million if he would have just signed with the zone. Oh, hold, hold on, on the Espinosa calculator. He still made more on Showtime. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen Espinosa's calculator. Let's see what Stephen Espinosa has to say. I, believe, to say. I yes. do believe with that coming out, Lee, I bet you it's going to be Broner, the first one that flips on Al Heyman. When Broner's career is done, which is coming up pretty fast here, possibly one more fight, but then that that really looks like it is. Did you see Broner got kicked out of a club? He didn't even get let in. So let's call it the Mike Tyson. By the way, uh, here's another shout out. Everybody go on to Netflix and watch the new Tyson documentary. Um, Wait a minute. Are you listening to me? Yeah. He got kicked. He didn't even get let, let into a club. And he had a girl with them. They said no. Who would let him into the club? He's probably got a gun, for God's sake. <laughs> That's what, hey, you are not Floyd. You are not Floyd. When I'm you just can't saying, I'm just saying what it is. Who would let that, Broner into a fucking club? Like, he's got girl, multiple he's arrests. Right. He beats people. Like, he's a car crash. I wouldn't let him into my, well, I'd let him into my club. I would. I would, but I'd keep a camera on him. I would profile maybe, Broner. Maybe, uh, yeah, he has to spend a certain amount of money. You already have that guaranteed at the door. Oh, fuck yeah. You got to pay first, dude. You're not skating on the bill. You're not famous enough to fuck me on the bill. If it's, right. Again, because when I win the $750 million tonight, I'm going to own a strip club too. Um, I would let Broner in. He's going to bring down the fucking clientele completely. He's a douchebag. <laughs> I'd throw him out. Like I'd get TMZ there and then watch him be thrown out with TMZ taking photos. And I'd own the sleaziest, shitty strip club ever. Just so I could throw Broner out of it. Saying Steven Espinosa made the news this past week. Uh, skeptics insist Deontay Wilder took a lot less money to fight Dominic Brazil on Showtime. Well, hold on. Yeah, here we go. Hold on. Keith Eidick's going to write the story. Steven Espinosa calculator says Keith Eidick is full of shit. Uh, DAZN executive chairman John Skipper offered Wilder $120 million in guaranteed purses. Uh, after confirming with advisor Al Heyman and co-manager Shelley Finkel and Jay Dees, Wilder chose to stay with Showtime. We all know that part of the story. And here is what Mr. Espinosa had to say. We're not going to publicize all of the financial arrangements like others have. <laughs> That's all you need to say right there. What an asshole. Yeah, right there. Now, That's when he pulled out the did, Wait, hold on, Andrew. Wait, I like this part. Now, if we did... Then this is like O.J. Simpson. If I had killed Nicole, and I'm not saying I did, 
this is how I would have done it. All right, all right Espinosa. Now, if we did, I think it's probably received less criticism, but his financial arrangement and his business and his business are, are his business alone. But to be absolutely clear, in general terms, we never saw this as be loyal and take a lot less money. He has established himself as a certain level and he's due compensation of that level and he's getting that. He just decided to stay with his current partner in order to continue getting that. What, what that really means is you still got less money. You might not got a lot of less money, but there's still that less money is still. Oh involved. my God. Why would you do this article, dude? Because they're. Hold dude, on. They're, Shout out to Keith Eidick for being the man and printing this article. You know, I give Keith Eidick on this show as the editor, assistant editor of Boxing Scene, a lot of shit for fucking up stories or not proofreading. In this particular case, shout out to Keith Eidick for printing this fucking article. I get the fact that nobody's clicking and reading on it because they just think that he's full of shit already. And, and you know what? Rightfully so. Steven Espinosa is full of shit. Would you like to know how I know he's full of shit, Andrew? Go ahead. His eyes are brown. Oh, wow. That sounds It's refreshing, racist. but it's not surprising coming from <laughs> Deontay. This will be our 12th fight together. We've spent a fair amount of time together, and I know he's a loyal guy. But that's not the end of the conversation. Loyalty doesn't mean that you dance with who brought you, even if that means one-tenth of the compensation in the open market. That's not the kind of loyalty we would ever expect. Loyalty means if you are generally in the same neighborhood with the financial opportunities, I think loyalty is a tiebreaker to stay with. Oh, you're a dick. Oh, Deontay, you are such an idiot. Oh, I, I want to title the episode, Keith Eidick is the man, Steven, o Steven Espinosa is a douchebag, and Deontay Wilder is still the dumbest heavyweight of all time. I don't know any way to get around it, Deontay Wilder fans. You guys so, really so here's literally another, have... Here's another one for your calculator, Lee. All right, hold on. Okay, so, so Eddie Hearn offered Adrian Broner... A three-fight deal from September of 2018 to September of 2019. That deal was worth $6.75 million. $6.75 million to get from L.A. to New York by train. Got it. How <laughs> now, many miles you, an hour was the train traveling? Now, if you look up Adrian Broner's fights from, from September of 2018 to September of 2019 which hasn't happened yet i understand that but we're just checking who is he fought for pbc one guy and his guaranteed purse was 2.5 million dollars okay my espinosa calculator is asking a very valuable question for the calculations andrew how loyal is broner on a scale of one to ten <laughs> is it ten i'm gonna is say ten. ten then he made more money with showtime <laughs> so Wait, hold on. I want to change the number to see what it says. One. The calculator says he would have made more with the zone. There you go. He's not, none of these guys are smart. I don't know what the fuck it is. They're making him drink Kool-Aid. I don't know if they're, it's mind control. I don't know so if what they're. What are we looking at? We're looking at his next fight. He needs to make he needs to make four and a half million. Broner needs to make four and a half million, and the fight no, needs Broner, to happen. Broner's not going to get a fight. <laughs> the fight needs to happen. Hold on, it needs to happen by September, or he's already okay, or so Al by Hayman September. Al Heyman fucked him. I'm paying four million dollars to fight Broner. I'm telling you, if he doesn't make four and a half, he got fucked out of six and a what. Six point well, yeah. seven five million dollars, Lee. Probably sounds pretty good in, in Adrian's bank account. Did you see? Now listen. Here's a question for you, Lee. Fuck this guy. Here's a question. Uh, how for do you, you not end on that story, Andrew? I'm you gonna tell you blood. something. Hold on. All right. When do you go from coach to first class? When did you make the switch? Me personally? Yes. Um, from coach to first class? Yes. The, the second after I went to first class. Okay. Well, when, at what time, Adrian Broner was caught in coach this week. 
Did you see the video? Well, that's because he doesn't have any money, bro. But wait a minute. He just made two point something no, million hold on. dollars. Would you like to know based on the – hold on. The Espinosa calculator. Adrian Broner made $2 million in his last fight. He had to pay off the person he slapped. That's a million dollars. <laughs> and then he had to pay to get out of jail and the bonds. The one he groped. He and, groped one right, too. right. No, the groping people, right. He had to pay that one <laughs> off to make, because she dropped the case. And then he's got to pay his corner. And so look, before I knock I'm guessing he doesn't pay his taxes, Andrew. I'm going to go way out on a limb that he's going to be found on tax evasion next. But let's just go out on a limb and say he paid his taxes. Hold on. Oh, I think he's he going to be PBC $47 based on my calculation. He owes the PBC. <laughs> yeah, he owes the PBC money after his fight. He's going to be robbed probably soon. I no, he's going to be found on tax see, evasion charges. I see next. some jewelry uh, insurance money coming in his brain. Oh, his I insurance. forgot. Fuck, hold on. He had to pay off the guy with the jewelry, right? Oh, yeah, that. that is true. Hold he on. He owed it. like a, a million in jewelry. So I'm wrong. He owes the PBC $1.4 million for his fight with Pacquiao. He's in the deficit after that fight. I'm going to say this to all the fighters that are out there. Get away from Showtime. It is. Uh, I, I think you want to look at the manager. Okay. I think if it's we a go over the fire. numbers, if we go over the. Adrian Broner was offered $40 million from Rock Nation, said, nah, don't need it. Never came close to making that. Then was offered six and six point seven five million last year. Last year, you guys, look at where Adrian Broner is today. I you guys, you got to look at 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 Mr. Wilder, eight million to fight uh, um, um, Wyatt. You had you had the the money fifth was it fifteen million to fight Joshua the first time, forty million for the next two fights. You had to fight with Klitschko he skipped out on. When are they going to make up this money that their advisor keeps advising them to turn away? I'm For you. Broner, I'm telling you, he's going he's gonna to be the first one to flip. You watch. The all tells uh, interview, whatever gets him a few extra dollars, That's I, believe, I got my money on Adrian Broner is going to be the first one to say, I should have a lot more money in the bank. I don't because Al Heyman ripped me off. You watch. I'm going to end the show right here, Andrew. I have to go to the forum. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. No. There's no, reason. There's no reason to apologize. We did an hour. There's no Damn. reason to apologize. We do hours this fast was a, now. This was a solid show. Probably <laughs> be one of our most popular shows, especially when I entitle it, Deontay Wilder still can't do math, and neither can Adrian Broner. I, th I feel like we should have a contest or a poll on the website uh, uh, of letting people vote on the titles for the shows each week. But there's no way to do it because we record and then I, you know, mix down. I mean, this really won't go out for about three or four hours, but maybe I should put, okay, let's put some titles up to let people vote on, shall we? Let's see what No. Wins. No? You don't want them to vote on titles? I don't know. It sounds stupid. It does not sound stupid. What do you want to call the show, Andrew? I'm going to let you name the show. Jeez, my daughter. Ooh, I got to give my phone. I got to give this phone to her mother. Oh, so we see? So we it's took a perfect away. place to end the show. <laughs> we took now away. Name the show and then do one of those Larry Merchant ending things that we've been working on with you. Ay, ay, ay. Right, no, I'm good to the show. show. I don't know. Um, I liked your Wilder... Uh, Broner's math. What about Broner's math? Broner's math. You got to look 40 million, 6.75 million. He, he okay. took. No, 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 I'm with you on that. I like that. All right. Now take me out. Uh, Larry Merchant style. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, Lee. I don't have anything. We'll All right, see I, you I on got Sunday, you, ready? you guys. You ready? You ready? I got it. Tell All me right. if I got it. Here we go. Jim. In the history of boxing, we've seen many fighters who really can't do math. But the PBC has clearly demonstrated, currently during the demise of Showtime, under the tutelage of Steven Espinosa, that perhaps Adrian Broner 
Deontay Wilder, and many others with the PBC have no ability to add more than two or three digits together. It's a sad day in boxing when fighters can't add one plus one plus one. Jim? Fightnetradio.com Fightnet!